week, we are going to simplify radical expressions. In simplifying radical expressions, you need to make use of the laws of radicals. Remember that a radical is simplified when all of the conditions are met. Let's have the three conditions in simplifying radicals. Number one, all exponents in their radicand should be less than the index. For example, square root of x raised to 5, the index is 2, the exponent is 5. And as you can see, 5 is greater than 2 or the exponent of the radicand is greater than the index. This means it violates the condition. Number two, the index and the exponent in the radicand should have no common factors except one. Example, the sixth root of x raised to four. This violate the condition. Number three, there is no denominator in the radicand or should radical in the denominator. For example, 1 over the square root of x. This also violates the condition. Take note, if the conditions are not met, the radicals are not yet simplified. The law of the radicals. We have two laws of radicals. The first law of radical is the product rule of radicals, wherein it states, if A and B are non-negative real numbers, then the nth root of A times the nth root of B is equals to the nth root of AB. Simplify the following radical expressions using the product rule of radicals. Number 1. Square root of 64. For our solution, we have here square root of 64. So we need to factor 64 wherein you can have a perfect square factor such as 64 and 1. Next, so we'll have there square root of 64 times square root of 1. Next, express each factor into its exponential form. The exponential form of six, square root of 64 is 64 raised to 1 half. And for the square root of 1, that's 1 raised to 1 half. So you will have there 64 raised to one half times one raised to one half. Step three, simplify each factor. Now, this time you need to apply what you have learned in the rational exponents lesson. So you need to express 64 that would be into its exponential form that would be eight squared and one is one squared. So you will have here quantity 8 squared raised to 1 half times 1 squared raised to 1 half. Step 4, rewrite it into a radical form. But before you rewrite this, you need to simplify these factors. So you will have here 8 raised to 2 over 2 times 1 raised to 2 over 2. Step 5, multiply 8 and 1. So 8 times 1, that's 8. So the final answer, or the square root of 64 is 8. Familiarizing the perfect squares and cubes is easier than in finding the roots. Again, Take note, familiarizing the perfect squares and perfect cubes is easier in finding the roots. Number 6. 
number two. Square root of eight. So you will have here, find the factor of eight wherein you can have a perfect square factor such as four. So if you will factor eight, wherein you have a factor of four, the remaining factor would be two. So you will have here the square root of four times the square root of two. Next, express each factor into its exponential form. That would be four raised to one half times two raised to one half. Four raised to one half, that would be the exponential form of square root of four. And two raised to one half, that would be the exponential form of square root of two. Next, simplify each factor. You will have here quantity two squared raised to one half times quantity two raised to one raised to one half. Next, rewrite it into a radical form. As you simplify, you have here 2 raised to 2 over 2 times 2 raised to 1 half. So as you rewrite this one, you will have here 2 and square root of 2. Now this time, multiply 2 with square root of 2. So multiplying 2 with square root of 2, that would be 2 square root of 2. So the final answer is 2 square root of 2. The cube root of y raised to 5. Factor y raised to 5 wherein you can have a perfect cube factor such as y cubed. In this case, the remaining factor is y squared. Next, so you will have there cube root of y cubed times cube root of y squared. Next step, express each factor into its exponential form. So you will have there y raised to 3 over 3 times y raised to 2 thirds. As you continue simplifying this, you will have y times y raised to 2 thirds. Then rewrite this one into the radical form. So as you rewrite this one into its radical form, you will have there y times the cube root of y squared. Now multiply y and cube root of y squared, that would be y cube root of y squared. Number 4, square root of 25x raised to 7. In square root 25x raised to 7, you need to factor this one wherein you can have a perfect square factor such as 25 and x raised to 6. The remaining factor is x. So you have there square root of 25 times the square root of x raised to 6 times the square root of x. Next, express each factor into its exponential form. So you will have there 25 raised to 1 half for square root of 25. Next, you have there x raised to 6 over 2 for the square root of x raised to 6. Next, you will have there x raised to 1 half for the square root of x. Next step, simplify these factors. So you have here 5 squared raised to 1 half times x cubed times x raised to 1 half. Next, rewrite this one into its radical form. So 5 raised to 2 over 2 times x cubed times x raised to 1 half. That would be 5 times x cubed times square root of x. Next, multiply 5 with x cubed and square root of x. So you have here 5 x cubed square root of x. The 8th root of 16. For our solution, you have here, since six, uh, you have here 2 raised to 4, since 16 is equals to 2 raised to 4. And 
Step 2, express this one into exponential form. So the exponential form for this factor is 2 raised to 4 over 8. Next, simplify this one. By simplifying 2 raised to 4 over 8, that would be 2 raised to 1 half. And 2 raised to 1 half, as we rewrite into the radical form, will be square root of 2. And square root of 2 will be our final answer. The second law of radicals is the quotient rule of radicals. Quotient rule of radicals states that if a is greater than or equal to 0, and b is greater than or equal to 0, then the nth root of a over the nth root of b is just equal to the nth root of a over b. So let's apply this quotient rule of radicals as we simplify the following radical expressions. The square root of 12 over 3. In this case, since you can divide the radicand, or since you can simplify the radicand, so we can divide 12 by 3, or we can simplify the radicand, so that would be square root to 4, since 12 divided by 3 is 4. Step 2, express this square root of 4 into its exponential form. So that would be 4 raised to 1 half. And as we continue simplifying this exponential form, that would be quantity 2 squared for 4 raised to 1 half. Continue simplifying this, that would be 2 raised to 2 over 2. And 2 over 2 is 1. So you will have here 2 raised to 1 or simply 2. So the square root of 12 over 3 is 2. Number 2. The cube root of x raised to 10 over the cube root of x raised to 7. In this case, since you can still divide the radicand, so you need to put this 2 radicand inside the radical sign of cube root. So you have here the cube root of x raised to 10 over x raised to 7, so that you can divide x raised to 10 by x raised to 7. In this case, by applying the laws of exponents, x raised to 10 over x raised to 7 or x raised to 10 divided by x raised to 7 is x cubed. So you will have here the cube root of x cubed. Next, express this one into its exponential form. So you will have here x raised to 3 over 3. And as you simplify this one, this is equivalent to x raised to 1 or simply x. So the cube root of x raised to 10 over the cube root of x raised to 7 is x. Number 3. The square root of 9x raised to 4 over 16y raised to 4. Since you cannot divide this expression, you need to separate the extracting of square root in the numerator and in the denominator. So as we extract the numerator and the denominator, you will have there 3x squared since the square root of 9x raised to 4 is 3x squared for the numerator. And for the denominator, you will have there 4, 4y squared because square root of 16y raised to 4 is equals to 4y squared. And since you cannot anymore simplify this expression, this will be the final answer. So the square root of 9x raised to 4 over 16y raised to 4 is 3x squared over 4y squared. 
Number four, the square root of two over five. Step one, rationalize the denominator by multiplying it with square root of five over square root of five or one. We choose square root of five because as we rationalize the denominator, we need to look for a factor wherein we can make it to the point that the denominator will be a whole number, not anymore a radical expression. So, by multiplying the denominator with square root of 5, we can get a square root of 25. And square root of 25 is 5, that makes it a whole number. So, next step, multiply as if you're multiplying fractions. So, square root of 2 times square root of 5 all over square root of 5 times square root of 5. Continue simplifying this, you'll have there square root of 2 times square root of 5, that's square root of 10. Because 2 times 5 is 10. And for the denominator, square root of 5 times square root of 5 is equal to square root of 25. Now, next step. Since you can simplify square root of 25, and that is 5, you will have there the square root of 10 over 5. So our final answer is square root of 10 over 5. Or the square root of 2 over 5 is square root of 10 over 5. Remember, the goal in rationalizing the denominator is to cancel out the radical sign in the denominator. Number 5. The cube root of 2 over x squared. Since you cannot divide 2 with x squared, so you need to separate this expression in the numerator and the denominator. You will have there the cube root of 2 over the cube root of x squared. Next, rationalize the denominator by multiplying it with cube root of x over cube root of x or 1. Why cube root of x? Because this cube root of x can make this cube root of x squared a perfect cube. So remember, in rationalizing the denominator, make it to the point that your denominator would be a perfect square or perfect cube. So in this case, you have cube root of 2 times cube root of x over cube root of x squared times cube root of x. Multiply as if you're multiplying fractions. You will have there cube root of 2x for the numerator and the cube root of x cubed for the denominator. And remember, if you simplify cube root of x cubed, that would be x. So the final answer is the cube root of 2x over x. Again, the goal in rationalizing the denominator is to cancel out the radical sign in the denominator. So if, it's, if it is looking for the cube root, you need to find the perfect cubes in the denominator. And if it is looking for the square root, you need to look for